previously on Super Idols RPG. Maybe stop wasting your time on elaborate schemes and just, you know, focus on trying to be a better idol that just... Uh, that's what I was trying to tell our club president. Like, uh, I wish it were that easy. She's so controlling. Well, you could just perform a coup and make somebody else president. Hmm. When people do approach you, it's more for what happened on Saturday and not so much for the Labor Day Monday, because the former was more spectacularly incendiary. Because if I was a technology company and there were people who can do things that can, technology cannot do, I would want to get my hands on those people or to get my hands on their powers. But of course, you have a few more rehearsal sessions you need to go to in the auditorium leading up to your big gig next weekend. Let's not forget that you also have that very exciting thing coming up in your future. We have a name. And I have a dance choreo for you. Hey there everyone and welcome back to Super Idols RPG. As always, I am your GM Aaron Cerise and with me today are Dana. Hello. T. Hello. Drac. Hey. And Luca. Hello. All right, all right, all right. Today we have a prelude to something we've all been waiting for for a very long time. The gig at the Stormlight. Yeah. Ooh. Rhythmics. <laughs> Yeah, everybody get hyped for not quite the gig. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Almost the gig. Woo! It's the penultimate episode before the gig. <laughs> it's the gig eve. Yes, it's gig eve. <laughs> Is that the... Do we have an episode title already? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I think so. <laughs> yeah. uh, I guess before we get into any of that, I just want to recap. We had some big discoveries that happened last episode. Uh, Y'all went to a show by the illustrious idols Vape or Wave, uh, and you learned a few important things at their show. Um, one, don't trust adults. Two, don't vape underage. And three, Crimson Signal's stage tech seems to have some kind of magical energy sapping ability. Oh, yeah. So you unfortunately do not have much time to follow up on these discoveries right now, just because it's so close to the gig and you have so much practicing still to do. Um, however, it, it it is still a couple of days until the show. Is there anything that any of you think you would be able to squeeze in in terms of follow up in the meanwhile? Or are you just putting off all further investigations until after the gig? Maybe one thing we could easily do would be to make a list of other uh, idol act who were at the Crimson Signal event, or maybe see if any other one started uh, shilling. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Featuring their products. Yeah, are you checking like their social media or trying to get in contact with them? or Just social media, just uh, having a list of people that might be targeted. Okay, so the, the main ones that you know were there, other than Vaporwave, the ones that you could identify... There was the group that Angie is familiar with, Physicians Unknown. They're the group that her friend Sophia really likes. Uh, so you do a little research on them. Uh, <laughs> okay, I finally get to explain why they're called Physicians please, Unknown. Please, please. I'm, I'm very curious. We didn't want to ask, but... I've been dying to know. <laughs> Their thing is they're, they're centered around their leading man, Connell Smith, who calls himself Time Lord... And he has age manipulation powers, so he can make himself look any age he wants to. <laughs> His other bandmates are Noble Rose, she has vine powers, and Torchwood. <laughs> and he has... Oh. Um, so they're, mm. they're, they're a Doctor Who themed mm -hmm. band. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. I, when you said the time, I was like, okay, is it just a coincidence? And then you went with... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, um... <laughs> Torchwood has um, what what is listed on their wiki page as pyroportation powers, so he can teleport inside columns of magic fire. Sounds really cool. That's not very subtle, but sounds pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, so they're 
they're basically a Doctor Who cover band, um, but with superpowers. <laughs> and that's what you find out about them. Um, and of course, that's why Sophia loves them, because she's also like a big Whovian. I love that. So he, he's canon in this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he's canon. Yes, I love that. Okay. <laughs> uh, so you you do see that they've been doing a little bit of shelling, not as much as um, not as much as Vape or Wave has been doing, but they're they're put they're putting out some of the social media posts. Thankfully, you don't see that they've like done any kind of like shows like Vape or Wave has done, like with a special stage or anything. But you definitely do see that they're putting out sponsored posts. Okay, so they're safe for now. Mm -hmm. It seems so anyway, yeah. Short of actually contacting them, that's what you can get out of looking them up. There's only one other act that you're really familiar with, although it's not you're not that familiar with them. You just know that they're out there just by name recognition. Their name is Ashen Fire. That's um, Ashen, A-S-H-E-N, space F-Y-R-E. And they have magma powers, including the ability to harden and cool magma into rock. Oh. They actually haven't posted much, really. They they said that they went, but they haven't actually posted anything with the hashtag, like, shilling anything yet. Okay. Yeah, for some reason, hashtag shilling anything is, is just not, it's just not popular. <laughs> yeah, it's really it's weird. It's not very it's catchy. Really... I don't know why they picked that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they've really only just posted, like, I went to the Crimson Signal event. It was, I... <laughs> Um, is there an alternate idol version of Earth, Wind, and Fire from the 70s that would have special elemental powers? Ooh. Jaden would be very jealous if there is. Just a bunch of nobles. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe they would be jealous of him because he's one person who can do all <laughs> everything that the four of them can do. Yeah. <laughs> someone has to be Earth, someone has to be Wind, and someone has to be Fire in the other <laughs> group. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or the three of them, I guess. Yeah, it's like, I can count. Yeah, they don't have water, do they? No, they don't. So that's one more leg up that Jaden has on this group. Jaden can join and be the water, and then we Earth, Wind, Fire, and Water, <laughs> like featuring water. You know what? I'm gonna say it literally is Earth, Wind, and Fire. This is is Earth, Wind, and Fire Two, the sequel. That's their name, <laughs> and they're they're a legacy band. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I love this canon we're building for this. For this, this, is the, this is the world building yeah, episode. Yeah. <laughs> we absolutely have to save Physician Unknown. The good thing is they'll probably believe us if we tell them what's going on. <laughs> they probably would. Oh my god. We can definitely start with some questions, you know. Well, you definitely have an excuse to go see them sometimes, since you have someone who probably goes to all their shows. That's true. We do know a number one fan. Mm -hmm. Do we know when the next show is going to be? Uh, definitely not before the gig, but okay. you can probably see that they're going to have another show sometime within the next few weeks. But yeah, even if they did have a show before the gig, you probably wouldn't have time to investigate it just because you're very busy. Um, but you, you've had time to look them up at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess other than that, the, it's pretty much just the research that y'all have been doing. Yeah, I, th I think Valerie's just like, yes, this... You know, possibly dangerous conspiracy that may have uh, kidnapped our friend and bandmate is very important, but so is the gig. We need to prepare for that. <laughs> yeah. Right. It honestly is because, like, if you like skip out on the gig or like do poorly at it, that will very negatively harm your reputation and hurt your ability to like actually continue doing everything that you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it won't have many swings to pull. Yeah, exactly. Like the the better standing you have as idols, the more like pull you have and connections you have to take advantage of. So it's when you think about it, it's a, it's a strategic move. Yes, that's definitely what she meant. <laughs> Wink. <laughs> <laughs> Even then, um, whatever information that we can find out on our own time, there's just not enough information to act on before the concert. Yeah. So we can really only do the gathering, the information gathering in between rehearsals and stuff like that until we figure out what's going on. Because unfortunately, as much as I'd like to try, I don't think we can break into the Crimson Signal building just yet. Mm -hmm. Not yet. Without confirming our hypothesis at the very least. No, we'll have to be craftier than that. Yeah. Oh, and speaking of Crimson Signal, I have a quick little scene I'd like to show from after we investigated Vaporwave. 
Oh, sure, go for it. There's something I'd like Alan to do after they get home that night. We're at the Mikuchi house, and Alan is laying on the bed, scrolling on their phone. They're trying not to think about Crimson Signal too much, because it's, it's a lot to process right now. The kidnappings and the, the energy drain. The, right now they, they're just looking at the Queen Bee Idogram profile, liking comments, seeing how the pictures from the show are doing. It's not great. A lot of Vaporwave fans are calling her a wannabe who can't vape. A wannabe. Alan turns the screen off. And then they turn it on again, checking for new comments on the post uh, promoting the gig. It's all happening so fast, are they even ready to get on a stage? What if what, what if beating zero degrees was just a fluke? I, is she gonna mess it up like she did against Sagittaria? Alan is breathing faster and is starting to spiral. <sighs> what would Queen B do? Alan's breathing slows a little. That's easy. Queen Bee would make a show of force. She would make sure her rivals knew she wasn't worried, that they were beneath her. Alan smiles and picks up the little letter writing kit, the one they used to make uh, the apology note for Karen. They sit at the desk and pick up the fountain pen. To the members of Sagittaria. You are cordially invited to attend Fort McNally's Idol Club's inaugural concert to be held this Saturday at the Stormlight. Tickets will be reserved in your name. Best wishes, Rhythmix. And as they wait for the ink to dry, they smile. Yeah, that should be enough. Alan. Oh, what have you done, honey? So yeah, you've probably been hashing out a lot of this kind of in your shared Discord group in between school and practice sessions. Um, and indeed, you're now finding yourself, uh, as you get through the rest of the week and somehow keep up with school in the middle of all of this, it is now Friday night, the night before the gig. Gig Eve, you might say. You are in the auditorium doing your final dress rehearsal. The drama club is running tech for you, and you are just finishing practice on your final number. What is your big show-stopping choreography for the finale shaping up to look like at this point? I think with um, with the help of B, we're probably on track. Like I think we we would have ironed out all of the significant details and stuff, and now it's just repetition at this point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was the choreography. Oh, did we want to do the platforms this time around? Or was it more like we're going to stay with choreographed dance moves and then a pose? I think the platform was a bit too advanced. Uh, maybe Valley yeah. could rise up, but uh, not us. Yeah. I think the idea was to leave that for the whatever the next thing is. So I have more time to practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's mainly I why I asked, because I know you had like that big ambitious idea, but it was probably going to be too much to do for this show. So what do you think would be the big finishing move for this one? I can definitely end it with fireworks after the final move, but I would assume that we would do, I don't know if it's a show stopping move, but something that like we just end in a pose or something after the song is done. I have an idea, which is once again, going back to my sort of visual inspiration for Valerie, which is Review Starlight, which is sort of taking her sword and just like dramatically stabbing it down into the stage in front of her. And then there can be fireworks behind everyone as they pose dramatically. Ooh, I like that. Mm -hmm. Kind of like they're radiating out from Valerie in the center. I love it. Yeah, that'll be great. And it also calls back yeah. to that's the move that Valerie finished off her first performance in episode four for all of y'all with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And maybe um, after Valerie stabs the sword into the stage, it's like all four of us are there in the finishing pose. Yes. Yes. Yeah. If it's the four of you, maybe it's some kind of like diamond formation. Yeah. Yeah. Where we all have our hands on our hips. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. 
Sailor Moon style. But anyway, <laughs> I don't know if you guys are up for this yet, but I almost imagine like a tumbler formation, like not the not the site, but like circus tumblers, like <laughs> people on top of Ooh. each other kind of thing. Oh, wow. Because <laughs> we have two very acrobatic type performers. And a very strong one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, Jaden's pretty sturdy, I think. I don't know how acrobatic he is, though. <laughs> <laughs> I think B and Valerie may be able to do that side of it where, I don't know, we do the whole cheerleader thing where we stand on each other's shoulders or something. <laughs> <laughs> and I think Angie would probably be a good base for that. Right, because she would be able to hold everybody up very easily. I was thinking of just holding up one person. Oh, fair, I yeah. don't think she's ready to <laughs> be able to hang on to two. <laughs> or maybe you and B both on the ground holding up Jaden. yeah. <laughs> Or you can toss Jaden in the air, and then he does a big flare of... Uh... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I'm down for that. He does like, balances himself with some, like, jets of air. Should we try it? <laughs> That's I could see that being what you're practicing right now, and that would definitely be yeah. something fun to try with a move. Oh, no. <laughs> Jaden going to break his neck? What's going to happen? Well, the fun thing is, if you're practicing this now then however this turns out can turn into some kind of modifier for the actual gig. Good point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, well, we're practicing it, <laughs> I guess. Actually, since this is a team move, I'm going to have you do it through idle activities, even though it's more meant to be like an off-screen thing. Um, yeah. I think we can say that this is the off-screen activity that leads up to whether you succeed or fail at this. Okay. Yeah, yes. so... When time passes, which is the time that you've spent practicing since Vaporwave's show, so everyone participating says what they're doing, and then a representative will make a flat 2d6 roll, and then we'll add our modifiers to that. So how is everybody participating in the routine leading up to the final move? I think she's just getting into position and just getting ready to do her part to launch Jaden up. All right. I think Jaden can probably subtly help everyone's stability. It's like if he notices people are like starting to like stumble to the left, he can blow them a little bit to the right <laughs> without it being like a very visible oh, yeah. thing that people in the audience will notice. Nice. Yeah. Just enough to keep the balance. Yeah. If it uh, looks like Jaden is coming down the wrong direction, wrong angle, I am positioned to jump and catch him as a backup. Oh, I'm warning him first. Yes. Uh, and I, I guess Valerie is kind of like signaling the timing to the group. Right. Oh, yeah. Like a, uh, a beat count, I guess mm -hmm. you could say. Yeah. Yeah. Like you'd be in the middle of your song, but you would also you could also make like hand motions or something while you're doing it. Mm hmm. All right. That sounds like extremely <laughs> teamwork. Yes. So I think this will work well. So the modifiers for this idle activities role add plus one to this role if the whole team is working towards the same goal. That sounds like a plus one to me. Add one to this role if at least one participant has no conditions marked. Uh, I definitely do not have any conditions marked. Awesome. So you're going to get a plus two on this. And then who wants to be the representative who's going to roll this? I'll do it. <laughs> My life right. isn't good. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like Angie's putting in a lot of work. Here. Yeah. She's, she's taking her co-president role very seriously. It's a nine. On a 7 to 9, the group still gains a benefit, but the GM will also detail a complication or obligation that snuck up in the meanwhile. Alright, so I'm going to say the, the benefit from this is that when you attempt this move in the actual show, you are going to gain a plus 1. And the complication is probably actually going to lead in very well to what I have next, so we're going <laughs> to we're gonna hit that next, I think. Oh no. <laughs> you get into this move, Valerie's signaling... Everybody's getting into position. You manage to lift Jaden up successfully. The drama crew shines the lights exactly where they need to be. Jaden shoots out his big flare of fire and wind. Angie shoots out her fireworks. Everybody is posed perfectly. The sword comes down and it looks damn impressive. And in the audience, you hear faint clapping from Karen. Woohoo! That was awesome! That, that, that was awesome. Can I, can I get that now, please? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. We just got to... Um, and then I guess we do that awkward thing where we're like, <laughs> okay, maybe we should have 
thought of this part out before we <laughs> held Jaden up. <laughs> it, it's fine. I'll just jump off. And he just like jumps off and kind of like buffets his landing with some like gushes of air. Perfect. Yes. And then you also you see the the drama people coming out of the booth from the back and they're clapping as well. Like, holy shit, that was awesome. That was so cool. And they you you're starting to feel real good about yourselves. Like. You're, you've got this. This, sh- this is going to go great. Mm-hmm. And as you're all finishing up and congratulating each other and uh, talking to people, hey, Valerie, your phone starts to ring. Okay, I hold up a finger to signal everyone quiet and answer the phone. All right, I look at the name first. Uh, it is Grace. Okay, uh, yeah, then I do answer. Hello? H- hey, Valerie, uh, it's Grace. Um... Sorry, I, I know you're practicing right now. I see it on your calendar. Um, but I I have something important to tell you. Are are you with your groupmates right now? Maybe you want to put me on speakerphone for this. Yeah, one sec. And I, I put it on speaker and gesture everyone to come closer. Uh, everybody, this is Grace. They're my assistant and my contact at Rain Shadow Records. Uh, Grace, you know everybody in Rhythmics already. Hey, Grace. Hey, Grace. Hello. Oh, okay. Uh, hi, first, I guess, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Grace. Um, I'm Valerie's assistant here at uh, at Rain Shadow Records. Uh, they, them pronouns. Um, th- so, I, um, I have some news for all of you. There's good news and there's bad news. Which do you want to start with? Uh, let's start with the bad news. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get that out of the way. Yeah, good news can be like a palate cleanser. Mm. Okay, so the bad news is that um, you're not going to be the only group on the bill for your time slot now. The Stormlight heard a bid from another group that wanted some time that night, and after some discussion with our people here at Rain Shadow, the venue agreed to double book. And it was, um, it was actually Mary who gave the okay on this. She said it would make things more interesting. Mm. Valerie narrows her eyes dramatically. Yeah, there's definitely a part where it shows, like, a shot of each of our faces where we gasp <laughs> in, like, separate <laughs> shots. <laughs> gasp. Those comic book panel shots, yeah. <gasps> yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but Angie narrows her eyes as well. So, what, we're getting half the time? Mm, We'll get to that. Um, First, I should probably tell you who the other group is. Um, It's it's no easy way to say it. It's Sagittaria. Uh, Mary said that turning this show into a rematch between the two of you would definitely draw all the people who saw those viral videos to your show. More awareness for your brand and whatnot. Of course. Of course she did. Uh, But that does lead into the good news. The good news is that you're being bumped to the main stage. Yay! So uh, you're going to get a much bigger crowd than we expected for this. (laughs) Um, And you will... uh, You'll both be on stage at the same time. Uh, Okay. Um, I have a question about the stage setup. Go for it. Um, the technology for the stage and everything, the stage lighting, it's going to be from the storm light, right? There's no going to be any outside technology and lighting and stuff like that? Um, as far as I know, why do you ask? Oh, it's just because, you know, Sagittaria uh, probably has sponsorship because um, one of their dad is under Crimson Signal and we don't. So I just wanted to make sure that the the fight was fair. That's all. Oh, that's a good point, actually. I think I need to bring that up with uh, with Mary. I don't think she's aware of any Crimson Signal connection for the other group. Uh, Yeah, I think it's a familiar one, but um, I just wanted to put it out there that... uh, Uh, Maybe just the technology that the Stormlight has for the stage will be enough for uh, both of our teams to be on equal footing. Yeah, I'll I'll get in contact with Mary, um, and we'll contact the venue and make sure that there's no um, competing brand stuff going on. Like, 
it was your show first, you get priority in terms of billing. I think they'll agree to that. Okay. I think that that's okay. Um, I guess I'll explain a little, since we're talking about the stage setup, I'm going to explain a little bit more about that, too. So this isn't going to be amp versus amp like what you did before. Like I said, you're both going to be on the same stage, and the way this is going to work is you're basically going to battle for control of it. The last group with a member remaining on stage will be the winner, and will get the right to finish out their set. Wait, what? Y yeah. So we're not sharing the stage, we're battling for the stage? Exactly. Like, they really are billing this as a rematch between the two of you. <laughs> um, okay. Does that mean our kind of, like, choreography kind of goes out the window, or is that... No, not... Well, it will if you lose, um... But if you win, you will get to finish up out what you had set oh. for the rest of your choreography. I would recommend for the battle number to take one of your less intense numbers and maybe try to work that choreography into the battle number just so that you like have something you can work from for that and make sure that you get at least some of that in the early number if you do happen to lose. Okay. I, I know it's not great news. Uh, I, I really... They pause, like, they're um, checking to make sure no one else is listening, like, I saw the video, and those bitches can suck it. Like, they suck. You can do it. I believe in you. Th thank you. Thank you, Grace. <laughs> I know I, I know that you did your best to get us the best deal that you could. Yeah, like, there's there's really only so much I can do. And I, I, th what I will do is fight as hard as I can to make sure that Sagittaria doesn't get an inch more representation than they're legally allowed under whatever thing that they've signed with the venue. We really appreciate it. If you have any concerns about, like, their branding or their tech or anything, like, I'll make sure that that is not present at the show. Good. Thank you. What about backstage space? Like, would we have to share? Um, unfortunately, yes. Um, there are only so many dressing rooms back there, so uh, a couple of you may have to share. Can we get, like, some sort of fancy soda? <laughs> you hear them laugh. Yes, I'll, I'll bring in the fanciest of sodas, courtesy of uh, Rain Shadow's Accounts Payable Department. I appreciate it. Um, so, yeah, I guess that's, again, that's not the greatest news to give, but um, I've given it, and I do wish you all the best of luck. Oh yeah, th thank you. Um. And and Valerie, uh, I think especially you, you let me know if the, if you need anything else in particular from me. If there's anything Rain Shadow can do to like help your performance and help you trance these bitches again. Yep, I I'll I'll let you know. Thank you, Grace. Thanks. All right. Well, I hope you have a good rest of your session and good luck tomorrow. Thanks for everything, Grace. You're welcome. <sighs> okay, well, that sucks. The drama club chimes in with this too because they probably heard all that too, and they're like, "What the hell, man? Like, what is, what is your life even right now?" <laughs> <sighs> well, I guess I'll just have to throw them to the ground single-handedly again. <sighs> Karen yells from further back in the auditorium where she's been sitting. Fuck him up! Oh, we will. I should probably try not to destroy the stage this time. I would feel really bad about that. Try not to do that! Yeah, I mean, other than that, just destroy them, not the stage. I think we can figure it out. They won't know what hit them. I think we got this. I think we do. I think we know what to expect this time. Yeah, and they don't. And we're stronger now. I mean... Have they brawled with C-sharp agents? That's like military. You guys did that. Mm. Yeah, that was... That's true. Yeah. That was weird. Does that mean we, we should like practice another like set specifically for this? Yeah, maybe we should figure out some like fight specific choreography or... Uh, can we get our hands on one of those tennis ball shooters? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't see why not. Like, maybe outside? Yeah. Because, uh, like, the last time we got hit when we didn't expect it and we fell to pieces. 
we need to start expecting it and still go on dancing. Like, I say, let's give that to Karen and let us just take pot shots at us while we dance. I think that's a great idea. Karen raises a light stick. I'll go get the tennis ball shooter from the equipment storage. Okay, we'll meet you out there. Yasmin raises a hand next. Um, and if you need extra bodies to practice against, we're very well versed in stage fighting. Thank you. Actually, sure. We'll work solely on our reaction time. And I look at the others just to make sure that that sounds good. And that way we're not using our powers specifically to dodge stuff. This is just about reacting, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. During this conversation, Valerie's just been like looking at the ground, avoiding. Yeah, we should definitely not use our powers to fight the drama club. <laughs> um, do you have any, well, can I borrow a, a prop sword? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And one of the drama girls goes to the prop room in the back um, and comes back in a few moments with an array of prop swords. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> take your pick. Valerie just grabs whichever one is the closest to her own energy sword. All right. So you spend another couple of hours uh, practicing basically stage fighting with them. They get their like prop weapons and uh, dowels and rods and whatnot and uh, practice like coming at you without actually hitting you just to test your reaction time. Uh, you're uh, keeping your powers to like either nothing or a minimum just to make sure you don't hurt them. Um, and you're, you're testing all your reaction time, seeing if you can pull off any like cool acrobatic stuff, uh, any specific stuff that anybody wants to say that they're preparing, like just in case. Like again, this won't have a mechanical effect on the gig, but it will like provide precedent if you're trying something elaborate. Valerie is definitely practicing like hitting tennis balls out of the air with the prop sword. Nice. And, and Karen makes sure to make sure to, to vary up the speed so that you know you're never you're always on your toes. Mm -hmm. I'm actually doing that as well, just trying to like you know do a spin kick and shoot one out. One goes <laughs> out and maybe I say home run and <laughs> stuff like that. And uh, I think other than that, it's just dodging while still trying to look cool. So like doing a ballet spin or something like that. Nice. I'm trying that, but more about maneuvering around the opponent, dancing around them and possibly tripping them. <laughs> Very good. And of course, they're like, they're hammy drama kids. So of course, whenever you like manage to quote unquote trip them, they, they make like a big reaction and they, they make sure to, to sell it to like the one audience member. <laughs> like, hello, you got me. Just a Wilhelm scream. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Somebody plays the Wilhelm screen on their yeah. on their phone because they have it on hand. Jaden is would probably be on the drums or I think so. Yeah, so he can't exactly move around, so he's probably like practicing um, actually just taking hits without um, dropping the rhythm. Um, every so often, if he has the opportunity to, he'll probably like <laughs> try and knock a tennis ball out of the air with one um, drumstick while continuing with the other. I think that all sounds pretty reasonable to me. So you, you spend some time doing that. You're all feeling pretty good about that. But you actually end up getting one more surprise before the night is over. As, as you're finishing up, you hear the auditorium doors open and in walks Ms. Doyle. And her face looks very puzzled. Uh, hey, hey, Ms. Doyle. Uh, hi, hi, Ms. Doyle. Hi, uh, hi everyone. Um, I... I'm sorry to bother you this late. I'm I'm here working late myself. Um, but I just received this at my office, and she holds up an envelope. You can't see it very well, but you can see that in fancy script, the word rhythmics is printed on the front of the envelope. And she comes closer to hand it to whoever's closest. Uh, she says, um, I received this. It's for all of you. Um, but I'm a bit surprised to see it who it's from. Uh, Valerie, we'll, we'll take it. Yeah, so Vi Valerie takes the envelope. Uh, you can see that the rhythmics on the front of the envelope is not even written on the envelope. It's like embossed on it in a, like a fancy script. And where the return address should be is the Fort MacArthur School Crest. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Uh, I, 
you know, look at the rest of the group and say, like, maybe you should step back just in case. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everybody takes a comically large step back. I definitely get into, like, a defensive stance, like, yeah. with my fists up and everything. <laughs> uh, and then I think um, Valerie kind of uses her telekinetic powers to hold the envelope in the air, takes a step back, and lifts the flap with the tip of her sword. I love how you're treating this like a bomb. Like, I don't blame you, <laughs> but I love this imagery. And then, assuming it does not explode or leak poison gas or anything like that, uh, I'll actually look in the envelope. It's not out of the realm at this point. <laughs> <laughs> this exact scenario happened when I was playing No Thank You Evil with my nieces last week, so... Oh my god. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> we, we were sent into a musical mystery maze. <laughs> Do I have to call you out for metagaming? <laughs> no, <laughs> I won't. This is too good. <laughs> uh, but yes, when presumably nothing happens, I will then actually look in the envelope. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you do that. Nothing comes out of the envelope except you see that there's more paper in there. Nothing seems too fishy about it. <laughs> you deem it safe eventually when nothing comes popping out. You pull the paper out of the envelope. And it, too, is printed on very elegant stationery on Fort MacArthur letterhead, because, of course, they have their own fancy letterhead. And you read the following letter. To the members of Rhythmics, it seems we have a common enemy. And you know what they say about the enemy of my enemy. I wish to discuss a mutually beneficial arrangement. If you accept, meet me tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. in the park between our schools. Think of it as neutral territory. You'll know me when you see me. Yours truly, Tyra Presley, former president, Fort MacArthur Idol Club. Okay, Queen Bee pretty much collapses in relief, like, whew. <laughs> so this is the former president that we convinced diana to take over the club wait what is that what you did so remember how we said she had this weird plan to uh infiltrate like our club and then that didn't make any sense so she left yeah we might have uh encouraged her to take action against the club president that told her to do that and now she's the club president and we're going to meet up with the person that was like overthrown does, does she know that you kind of instigated her coup probably i wouldn't remark on that well, all we did was tell Diana that if she didn't like how the club was run, that maybe she's the person to run it herself with her own ideas. Since the Diana we first met was very frustrated with how paranoid their president was of our school in particular, enough to have somebody infiltrate their team and not seriously consider training for competitions like what Diana wanted. So that's all we did. We didn't specifically say she had to throw the other president out. Just Karen breaks in at this. Actually, I think I remember you specifically said, why don't you perform a coup? So maybe I said that. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Doyle reacts like kind of very concerned. Like, wait, did you encourage a coup at another school? <laughs> it's just a club coup. Okay, they tried to sabotage our club first, to be fair. That is true. That is that is true. They, they did. I will never cease being surprised at the dramatics of teenagers, but yes, okay. I'm mistrustful, and I think um, this is just how I feel, but um, I think it's too close to the concert that I don't want to risk any injury or anything like that, and I'm hesitant to meet up before the concert with someone that we don't really know, at least not without being prepared. Valerie looks down again and kind of tightens her fists and says, we might need every advantage we can get against Sagittarius. This is going to be a really important show and we've already been thrown off of our plans. Hmm. 
Wait, are we... Is this definitely about Sagittarius? I think so. Uh, Sagittaria. Oh, yes. I mean, I guess we can just keep calling them Sagittarius, but... She did say that we have a common enemy, and um, Diana is the only common enemy I can think of between us. She wants back on top? If she can get there alone, I think we might actually have something to talk about. I guess it doesn't hurt to hear her out. Yeah, we we outnumber her at the very least. Yasmin breaks in. Do you guys need backup on this? Do you need more bodies? We we're, we at least some of us can probably go with you if you want. And you are actors. You could just pretend that you're part of the Idol Club. Yeah, or like we could have some people just like milling about the park as well, like that don't even look like they're with you. And you see some, like, some background drama people, like, getting very excited at the thought of, like, being extras <laughs> in, that like, a subterfuge kind of thing. <laughs> the sting operation. But yeah. <laughs> we need to record everything. Yes. Yes. Record everything. Yes, this seems like a good idea. And ho- hopefully she just wants to give us some information or advantage or something against Diana, but we can be prepared in case she tries to trick us or or backstab us somehow. Yeah, so in the future, if she gets back on top, we might have, like, she probably doesn't want her people to know that she worked against Diana with us, so that could be leverage. What I'm worried about is that this is just an elaborate trap for Sagittaria to cause some damage or sabotage things in advance. Though, in retrospect, it was kind of a disaster last time, so maybe they just think that they'll totally own us this time. I don't know. I just wanted to put it out there in case. Mm. I think that's honestly a pretty fair and valid worry. Um, I mean, based on everything we know about Tyra Presley, is that she was paranoid enough to try to send someone to spy on our club, even though this club has never been a threat before. After being overthrown by one of her own club members, she probably wouldn't keep working with them. It's worth hearing them out. And Ms. Doyle steps in at this point as well, like, um, I suppose I don't know exactly what I can do, but if you need an adult in the situation, I could make myself available that morning as well. I wouldn't be against that. Um, I mean, obviously, I don't have powers like you all do. Uh, I don't, from what it sounds like, I don't think there will be powers involved in this situation. But if something happens, then I feel like there should be a responsible adult around to get help or intervene in some way. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Um, I think there's a, a pause because Valerie like hadn't considered that, you know, having a responsible adult around is like an option in these situations. That's just not, (laughs) that hasn't come up before. All right, thank you. It would just make sure that whatever happens the night of Saturday uh, goes as planned per contract without any weird manipulative stuff from Fort MacArthur. So yeah, it makes sense to me. Yes, we would all feel safer if you were there. All right, I'll make sure to be there then. I'll wear my my most inconspicuous jacket. Today's full of surprises. It sure is. Karen gives you a, a sly grin as she sidles up. I think I like our odds, though. We did really nail that finishing move. <laughs> it was we, so we really cool. Did. Yeah. yeah. Look at this, I got such a good angle on it too. And she brings out her phone to show the video of (laughs) the recording she took of it. You got my good side. And then we all crowd around to look. Valerie's just going, "Mm, my angle of my sword was off. I need to adjust that. Oh, I didn't even notice. It looks okay to me, but I never use a sword. So trust your judgment on that one. It looks cool to me though. Oh, I can actually, if if he needs help with the angle, I can like... A little breeze might be able to keep it in place. No, that's. I mean, I. I just need to. When I when I drive it into the stage, I need to get it right so it will stick. No worries. We should look up cheerleader drops or whatever so that we can properly um, we can properly hold up Jaden when we do this move. 
Ooh, someday you could just curl me up and I can stick to the ceiling. Oh, I love it. And we still need like the glitter for the disco bees. So how's everybody feeling on the morning of the gig? So many levels of anxiousness and just anxiety and nervousness. <laughs> yeah, Valerie is a strong but complex mix of uh, excitement and nervousness and frustration. Yeah, just a storm of emotions, one might say. Hmm. Can't imagine why that might be. <laughs> But I think you're getting a lot of good support uh, from your folks this morning. Your parents are definitely coming to the show. Alice is definitely coming mm-hmm. to the show. They're hyping you up. They're reassuring you that things are going to be okay. Not that it necessarily <laughs> calms everything down, but you know that you're supported at least. Mm-hmm. Uh, similarly for Jaden and Aunt Jen, because Aunt Jen is definitely coming too. Oh, for sure. He's very excited to have her watch. And how about Angie and Alan? Angie is nervous, so nervous that the night before when um, one of her parents might have asked her what her plans were for Saturday, she might have told them that she had a gig. Ooh. Yeah. And they don't even know that you're in the idol club at school either. So or that she mm. has powers, so. Oh, Okay. Yeah, and I'm not sure, but I figured, like, they have to find out somehow, or if they find out on their own, I'm not 100% sure, but... uh... And and how do you think they took that? Like, did you explain that you have powers, or do they think that you're just doing a dance show, or...? Um, I'm trying to... I haven't fully thought it through. I think she might have just told them all in a rush, because she might be sick of hiding it. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Once you revealed that you have super strength, did you <laughs> threaten Freddy to not bug you or something? <laughs> no, I don't think she would, actually. I think, uh, I don't think she'd threaten him. Fair. I somehow yes. thought that the, the answer might be no, even as I was saying it. <laughs> yeah, no, I think, uh, I don't strike her as a person when she's not mad to threaten it lightly to regular people. I think that's fair. Actually, I think Freddy might be kind of excited to hear that his big sister has powers, because as much as he likes to bug you, he's also a little brother, and little brothers do mostly in their heart of hearts look up to their big sisters. (laughs) So I think he's a little excited to, like, brag to his friends at school that his his big sister could beat up anybody else's big sister. (laughs) Yeah. And um, I also think like everybody else would have been talking about how their parents and family are coming and she didn't even tell them about it. So then she's like, oh, I guess I'd better tell them so that they can come support us, too, I guess, or whatever. Yeah. And you're I think your your parents aren't sure how to react, but they do know that they do want to, like, support you, especially since, like, before everything happened, you were on track to, like, go to starve you whether you had powers or not Mm -hmm. i think they were gonna send you just because it was the best school so like yeah even if they thought you didn't have powers they were gonna send you there anyway when they had the money for it yeah so i guess it's a way that i still get to dance and do my thing yeah they're a little grumbly that they have to like interrupt their like i don't know saturday night wine drinking plans (laughs) to go to this show (laughs) Uh, but they are gonna go in that case (laughs) Yeah. Cool. And how about Alan? I would assume since your mom knows that she's probably going to go as well, probably your dad too? I think so. Cool, cool. Uh, Alan is just uh, electric. (laughs) Could barely sleep, could not eat this morning, just woke up two hours earlier than the alarm and just started practicing. (laughs) Aw. I think your mom probably would have tried to make sure that you had like a cereal bar at least. <laughs> but <laughs> I can understand the feeling. Can't you? Too nervous. <laughs> uh, I can maybe push down a couple spoonfuls of, of honey. Uh, <laughs> for the energy and to stay on brand. Yes, of course. <laughs> oh, uh, I really hope the rest of the group doesn't find out about the letter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes. I've been 
I've been looking forward to introducing this um this former club president character for a while too. Like if I Diana am... hadn't succeeded with her coup, um this probably would have been like the actual club president that y'all would have had to deal with for the for this arc. <laughs> I am Ooh. deeply intrigued. <laughs> okay, so with all of this collective nervous energy between you, the lot of you meet just a little bit before eight near the park between Fort McNally and Fort MacArthur. Um, I guess, does anybody want to give a, a name to this park or is it just a nameless park? Yeah, maybe it's like a, uh, I don't know, famous person that would have been in Cadence for a while in history. I uh, Lansbury Park? Sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Named for famous uh, honorary Cadence citizen Angela Lansbury. <laughs> They filmed a couple episodes in Cadence one time, so in like yeah. the 80s, yeah. so um, they still talk about it every year in the newspapers. I love it. <laughs> All right, so you meet up in Lansbury Park. It's a field. There's a few trees here and there. There's a small playground off to one end. There's a seating area with picnic tables near the other. I guess in the center, I'm going to say there is a big bronze statue of Jessica Fletcher in the middle of the park. <laughs> and of course, since it's fairly early in the morning, there's not many people here. But since it's Saturday, there are some kids here playing on the playground. There's joggers doing their morning runs. A couple of the benches are occupied by people enjoying the morning air. And you don't know what Tyra Presley looks like. But if you were to guess which one of the people here might be her... You would gather it is the very tall girl sitting casually at the picnic tables with short, slick back blonde hair, very expertly styled. She has a very sharp black vest, a white dress shirt with sleeves rolled up to the elbows, and very long black bell-bottom dress pants with a hem that almost touches the ground. And she's just like a fashion model sitting out on this picnic bench. I think that's her. I think, uh... Valerie, who is already transformed into Vivi at this point, just approaches her. Okay, so quickly before we start the scene, I'll do a real quick label shift for the both of you. Oh yes, I should also say that um, sitting on one of the park benches nearby, you can see uh, Ms. Doyle reading a very thick uh, novel. <laughs> very good. Um, and is some she of really the... reading it, or is she pretending to read it? <laughs> I think she's she's actually reading it. Like It looks like something okay. she would enjoy. <laughs> Actually, it's probably not a novel, even. It's probably, like, a very, like, thick, like, book on music theory. Um, yeah, I was just wondering if she was trying to blend in, so if she was pretending to read, just to be inconspicuous something. <laughs> Books <laughs> upside down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and some of the other people milling about the park are definitely the drama club members as well. Uh, Yasmin is walking down the path with her parasol, even though it's kind of an overcast day. Um, I guess she's hoping it will rain so that the parasol will be useful <laughs> uh, yeah so valerie is going to shift savior down and danger up okay i think uh, i'm going to shift mundane down and danger up and mundane gets really low now okay yeah you're at like your maximum minus two mundane right now okay so uh, you all are approaching Tyra. She she can spot you from a distance as well because she knows what y'all look like. And she welcomes you all with kind of an unsettlingly confident smile uh, and says, Ah, Rhythmics, I presume. Very nice of you to come. How are you? Uh, we're, we're quite busy, actually. Yes, I know. It's always a bit of a struggle to get everything you want to in the bustling idle life, I suppose. But I'm very grateful that you all decided to meet with me. I was hoping that I wouldn't have to just sit on this park bench awkwardly waiting for a group that wouldn't show up. So thank you for being professional and punctual. I think Jaden's very visibly nervous, like probably hiding behind Vivi and just kind of like pokes <laughs> out from around, um, around him. Well, why, why did you want to meet with us? Um, well, as I said in my letter, we have a bit of a common enemy now, don't we? And her name rhymes with Lyanna. Let's just say I wasn't quite expecting a young upstart to be able to turn my entire club on me. <laughs> um, I've still been participating begrudgingly, but 
Mm, it's just not the same when you're not in charge, you know? I much preferred being able to set my own rules for these sorts of things. And I would much prefer if we can put things back to how they were. And how is that relevant to us? Because you've already done half of my legwork for me. You made Diana's group look, let's just say, pathetic on that Saturday. They may have had a strong showing, but you absolutely decimated them, and that has hurt Diana's credibility with the rest of the club. They're willing to give her another chance, because clearly she's serious about things. But if she fails again in a very public fashion, it's going to be very clear to the rest of the club that she does not actually have what it takes to take us on the road to success. And they may be much more willing to accept my leadership again. So... I'm hoping that we can strike a bit of a partnership here. I'm willing to offer you a bit of assistance with the show, if need be. What kind of assistance? Well, I, of course, am a super idol as well, same as all of you. And I have, I have a certain set of powers that may be helpful for just, you know, helping you set the other members of Sagittaria a little off their game, let's say. And since she's, like, not very precious about her identity, she's actually going to stand up and transform in this moment. She keeps it fairly short, but you get this very bright white flash of light, and you see her hair grow out to this sort of long, wispy white color of hair. She has a very kind of drapey style sheer top on top of a seafoam green leotard with silver patterning and again the like bell bottoms on the bottom and she stands resplendent in this form and she demonstrates by holding up an arm and transforming it into crystal I have the ability to turn any of my limbs I want into crystal and shape them however I want. And I've learned to turn this ability in some interesting ways. I can extend my limbs out, make them extremely thin, almost like razor wire. And I can extend that out, mm, let's say maybe trip people up or give a slash if need be in very sort of undetectable fashion. Hmm. So you're offering to sabotage Sagittaria during the show. Precisely. Jaden just kind of looks back at the rest of the group, just a little bit wide-eyed. Nobody has to know it was me or you. My, I can be very subtle with my powers. Um, can I talk to everyone for a moment? Absolutely. Discuss amongst yourselves. Um, and she sort of lounges back. <laughs> Again, very, like, fashion model-like. Yeah, and I guess we all go over, like, I don't know, 10 or 20 feet away to, like, <laughs> huddle amongst each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you notice Ms. Doyle is kind of, like, raising an eyebrow. She's like, she can't hear the conversation, but she saw the transformation and is like, oh, God, what's going on? <laughs> um, no, that's my answer. <laughs> I, I, I agree, no. I, I, I'm glad I'm not the only one. Hold on. Would it, would it even work through, I mean, the... We're going to have a shield around the stage, right? Does that... Has, does anyone know if that's one way? I'm, I mean, I'm assuming that she'll be on the other side of the shield with us, with the team. I, I guess she wouldn't yeah, offer I, it. I don't like this. Yeah, I, I I don't like it either. I don't really care if it works. I, I think we can win without sabotage. And someone could get really hurt. I agree as well, and... Uh... Since we've met Diana, at the very least, I trust Diana to run this competition ethically without any interference, because that's how they did it last time. Like, there was nobody, you know, helping us or anything like that. It was, they did a good job with their powers and we were thrown off guard. I mean, it they are interfering. This, this was supposed to be our show, and, you know, now it's a battle, so... Having an advantage in getting them out of the way just means we can go back to, you know, having a gig to showcase our own music and, and what we can do. I know, but 
this would literally be stabbing them in the back. Like, you've seen those crystal arms. They look sharp. You can see her, like, in the background, kind of, like, turning her arms into, like, little jabby <laughs> blades and kind of, like, <laughs> sharpening them between each other, just casually, like, like one would, like, trim their nails. I thought you were going to say she turns her arms into blades and then just waves. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh... Vivi looks back at her doing that and then looks back at the group and says, um, okay, if that's what everyone thinks is best. We could still get something out of her. I mean, she knows Diana and the others. She could help us get in their heads. Yeah, I agree. I think maybe exchanging information, but um, I it doesn't feel right to me. I feel like if we can't beat them on our own, how are we going to handle a battle stage in the future? in competitions and stuff like that. I just, it doesn't feel right to me. I, I agree. I think we can do this without her help. Okay. I, if that's what you all think, then I'll, I'll trust you on that. Also, if she's stabbing them in the back here, what's to say she's not going to stab us in the back some other time? Or even during the show. That's a good point. That's true. What if this is all an elaborate attempt to give them an edge? She could make them look bad and then show up and save them. I mean, it's Machiavellian, but... That's true. That does seem like something she'd do from what we know. It's just we don't know her and we kind of know Diana a bit better. Okay. And Valerie turns to walk back. All right. And uh, Tyra transforms her arms back to normal um, and gives a little, like, gesture towards all of you. So, like, so what is your answer? Well, thank you for the offer, but no. Oh, I'm a little disappointed to hear, but I suppose it makes sense you would want to try and prove that you can do this yourselves. I kind of expected that that might be a possibility. I won't force you to work with me. Don't worry, I'm not that villainous. She kind of bats her frosted eyelashes at you and she says, and even as a show of good faith, I will give you a little bit of information about what Sagittaria is planning. Like, not even in a let's take advantage of secret information kind of way, just as a know what you're up against kind of way. All right. She pulls her phone uh, out of a pocket and she brings up some photos of Sagittaria. Of course, you recognize Diana and Rosette and Ashley. You can see pictures of them practicing in their idol forms. But you see they're also with three other girls, also in these white idol outfits. And Tyra points to photos of them and explains, they are training up three more idols because they know, or at least they think they know, that you have five members. So they want to bring their total to six to give themselves an advantage. They have brought on Lizzie, who, as she points to a girl with a curly red kind of princess style updo haircut with a big fancy bun in the back. She's got a sleeveless white blouse and white shorts with a sparkly gold belt. And she points to a girl that she calls Hannah, who is wearing a white Revolutionary War type uniform, very like Rose of Versailles or Utena-esque. And then this is Clarissa, who has fine, almost kind of butt-length brown hair in a low ponytail, and she's wearing a white gymnast leotard with silver and gold sequin patterns. I'm a little less familiar with what they can do, because they haven't shown off much of their powers, actually. I do know that Hannah has some kind of emotion-projecting power, but the other two are a bit of a mystery to me. I do know that two of them are very athletic, so you may have a bit of a dance challenge with both of them. But I just wanted to let you know that you have more people to contend with. Okay, that is good information. Thank you. Not at all. I do want to make sure that you have the best chance possible, and I respect your decision to do it honorably. Not my style, I will say. It's... <laughs> she gives a little laugh. It is kind of fun to be bad. You, know, you don't know what you're missing. But I do respect your decision. Well, thank you. By the way, your plan was a good idea. Getting someone in the rival idol club, you just sent the wrong flunky to do it. <laughs> Obviously, and she gives a little huff. 
flips her hair behind her. Ah, uh, just, mm, I just so dislike young upstarts being presumptuous without going through the proper channels, you know? Yeah, we've all been young. Indeed. I am curious, though. Why did you send Diana over to spy on us? Oh, standard practice. You never know. You can't be too careful. I knew that most of the Fort McNally Club was graduating the previous year, and as bad as a showing as they've had in the past few years, I knew that the President Amberly was largely the driver of that, because her style was not very confrontational and not much of anything to worry about. I wanted to make sure that whoever was coming up under her would either be the same, or if they weren't, if they were someone to watch out for. And if they were, cut that bud off at the root. No offense, of course, and she bats her eyelashes again. Well, I can't say you were wrong. I do see that you are certainly formidable rivals, and I respect that you were able to fend off my efforts. And she smiles again very kind of uncomfortably at you. Vivi kind of looks her down and up and says, Yes, well, hopefully we won't need to resort to subterfuge and sabotage to show that we're superior to Diana and her group. Yes, of course. Um, but of course, if you change your mind, you know where to find me. And she does a little twirl and flash and quickly transforms back to herself. She's got the, the transformation very, like, under control from what you can tell. Like, it's... <laughs> She can do it as quickly and smoothly as she wants to. Under his breath, Jaden's like, so cool. <laughs> yeah, Vivi's trying not to show it, but she's impressed at how cool she looks. Damn. You can be evil and look cool. In fact, it often helps. <laughs> it does. Very true, yeah. Yeah, it's true. Well, I do wish you luck tonight, all of you. I certainly will be in attendance, if not exerting my power on the show. Um, and I look forward to you hopefully showing Diana and her entourage the door. Hmm. Thank you. Hopefully we will. And she gives you a, a little bow, and she strides off in the direction of Fort MacArthur. I think once she's out of sight, you just hear a, the longest and loudest sigh of relief from Jaden. Like this whole <laughs> time, he'd been, like, tensed up. But when she's, like, out of sight, he kind of finally relaxes... Yeah, um, Angie does too, like, unclenches her fists and she realized she was clenching them <laughs> and just does a, uh, rolls her shoulders. After Tyra is gone, Ms. Doyle gets up and comes over to you, Yasmin in the drama club, mill towards you, and everybody kind of gathers near, I guess, one of the trees and picnic benches to regroup, I suppose. So, uh, I guess I'm glad that Happened without incident, um, flashy shenanigans aside, uh, says Ms. Doyle. Um, is there anything we need to be aware of? Do you need help with anything with her? Um, I don't think so. But maybe if you're at the show tonight, just keep an eye on her. Mm-hmm, definitely. Uh, we'll know who to look for. Jaden's like sitting on the floor because his legs were about to give out. So he's just sitting on the ground. Aww. And it's like... <laughs> Yeah, they, um, she offered to sabotage the team for us. Um, we, we turned it down, but yeah, uh, that kind of just, I guess, sets a precedent of what she's willing to do. Really? Um, uh, and Ms. Doyle looks very disapprovingly at that idea. Like, uh, I certainly will see if I can send some sort of reprimand to her school, although goodness knows she might have enough standing at the school that my word might not mean much, but I'll do what I can. Thank you. Hmm, not at all. Um, do, do we want to? We can end up on her bad side if we do. That's true, Jaden. Let's let her be. Uh, of course, my instincts as an adult in this situation tell me that that's probably a bad idea, but I will respect your wishes if that's what you want. You know, it's like uh, when there's a bully, you get the bully punished and then the bully waits for you in the parking lot. Yeah. With crystal knives. <laughs> <laughs> it's better if she just focuses on her own people instead of us. Kind of glad that 
Diana's leading them now. Yeah, I I guess I don't know if um, offering to sabotage a show that is outside school purview is a punishable offense. All right. Well, yeah, no, I, I understand. I just do wish I had I could help some more uh, as an adult who's supposed to be in charge of your well-being at Fort McNally. Uh, but I certainly will be at the show tonight and uh, we'll keep an eye out for you. And the rest of the, the drama club nods as well. And they're like, yeah, we'll, we'll have um, as many of us who are able to come there as well. We'll keep an eye and make sure that she's not trying anything funny. Thanks. Thank you, Miss Doyle. Did I miss anything? And you see Karen running towards you. Because <laughs> I just realized Karen wasn't in the scene. <laughs> she probably should have. Oops, forgot. I mean, having Karen come late kind of works. Yeah. 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 Uh, you didn't miss much, Slugger. Oh, good. Yeah, she asked us to cheat. Oh. Or she wanted to cheat and help us. Yeah. That bitch. That's what I thought too, right? I'm not surprised. Um, uh, I've heard stories about Fort MacArthur's tactics in the past. Amberly managed to steer fairly clear of them because I think she wasn't of much interest to them, but I kept an ear out on the scene, and they always place pretty well in events and whatnot, and that's... I guess now we know why. Yeah, it seems like not being confrontational was a good strategy to not take their interest, but... Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, they did try to come at us early on. That's kind of... Mm, we did have a couple of run-ins just in, like, the first, like, year or so that I was part of the club with Amberley. Um, but they learned pretty quickly that Amberley wasn't about that, so they just kind of left us be after a while. Well, the idol industry can get pretty cutthroat, so... Mm. I'm sure this won't be the only group that's going to try underhanded tactics when we go head to head mm, too true yes when, when sing star starts just you wait i've got a bunch of spreadsheets of all the schools and who to watch out for and i can i can help you out a bunch and it's gonna be spreadsheets. great spreadsheets i know right <laughs> i love spreadsheets they're so soothing to make i know right <laughs> Jaden is just smiling he doesn't get it, but he's happy that they're excited about something. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess is the plan just to put on the best damn show you all can? Yeah. Like always. Mm-hmm. That's right. Sounds like a plan I can get behind. And she raises up a light stick in a brilliant shining violet for you all. Thank you so much for listening to Super Idols RPG, and thanks to the wonderful cast of today's episode. Valerie slash Violence Violet was played by Dana Alexa, who can be found on Twitter at Author X. Angie slash Bane Raven was played by T. Jaden slash Elementum was played by Drac, who can be found on Twitter at Draconix. Alan slash Queen Bee was played by Luca, who has an in-character Twitter at Queen Bee. 15160871. Dialogue and cleanup editing for this episode was done by Kathleen Childs, whose work can be found on the Sword of Symphonies podcast at peachgardengames.com. GMing, final editing, and mastering was done by myself, Aaron Cerise. You can find me on Twitter and YouTube at Aaron Cerise, and you can find more information and art for Super Idols on our website at superidolsrpg.wordpress.com. Special thanks go to today's featured VIP patrons, Eric Kune, Icicle Prism, Liv, and Matthew F. This campaign is played using Masks, a new generation, written by Brendan Conway and published by Magpie Games, with custom moves by Aaron Cerise and Zach P. Our opening theme is Le Chevalier Noir Instrumental by Cyborg Jeff, and is used under license from Gemendo Music. Our ending theme is Born to Drive Me Crazy Instrumental, by Lance Conrad, and is under license from Storyblocks.com. All other incidental music and sound effects for this episode are licensed from Storyblocks.com, Freesound.org, and the YouTube Audio Library. Super Idols RPG is a proud member of Be Gay, Roll Dice, 
a network for RPG podcasts made by LGBTQIA plus creators. You can check out all the great independent queer shows on our network at twitter.com slash begayrolldice. Stay tuned for a promo from our network partner, the Eternity Archives. Thank you all for listening, stay well, and goodbye until next time! Hi, welcome to the Eternity Archives, an actual play podcast where we take on the role of archivists, working for an interdimensional library that catalogs and protects the fabric of reality. As archivists, we are tasked with journeying out into the realms, taking on characteristics of people from that reality, and remedying whatever issues may be causing a disturbance in the dimension. Every arc, we will be playing a different RPG, maybe even returning to systems we like later on. But this is a fun way for us as players and you as listeners to explore and learn about different tabletop systems. We'll discuss the rules, create sheets for our characters, and play a short campaign to get a feel for the game. Afterwards, we'll do a bit of discussion. We'll talk about what we liked and didn't like, and what we'd know to do better next time. My name is Babby, and I am playing Riddle de Jaquel. They are a tiefling nerd baby. I'm Ziva, and I am playing Linda, the lovable human office lady. And I'm Dorka. I play Zen, the barbarian lizard princess. Let's get down to some actual playing. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Yeah, let's go, boys. This This is the Eternity Archives. Archives.